Amen. Glory to God. All right. Does anybody remember what uh, verse we're in? Fourteen. Fourteen. Amen. It says the wrath of a king is as a messengers of death, but a wise man will pacify. A king's fury is a messenger of death, but a wise man appeases him. An intemperate leader wreaks havoc in lives. You're smart to stay clear of someone like that. The wrath of a king is as messengers of death, but a wise man will pacify it. A king's wrath is a messenger of death. Wise men will appease it. The king's wrath is a messenger of death, but a wise man will pacify it. A wise person will try to keep keep the king happy. If the king becomes angry, someone may die. How many? Let me just put it in layman's terms for you. Don't poke the bear. There's wisdom, and if you if the person listen, all authorities come from God, and if you know that you'll you. I understand working for bosses, having people over you that doesn't have a good temperament is never fun, but it will happen to you. You will have someone over you that doesn't have a good temperament. And you need to learn to be able, uh, you know, the Lord gave me wisdom how to be able to make them laugh. It's before all, they would ju or just give some, some wisdom, say a few things and pray and take authority. And before long, they were happy and they didn't know why. But uh, poking the bear never got anybody anywhere. But a lot of people want to have, they, they call it righteous indignation, but it's actually their temper flaring up against somebody else's temper, and now everybody's butting heads. So don't poke the bear. How much better is it to get wisdom than gold? and to get understanding rather than to be chosen than silver. Get wisdom, how much better is it than gold? And get understanding, it is preferable to silver. Oh, I skipped one, sorry. Glory to God. In the light of the king's countenance is life. His favor, favor is as a cloud of the latter rain. When a king's face lights up, there is life. His favor is like a cloud with spring rain. Good-tempered leaders invigorate lives. They're like spring rain and sunshine. How many know that we have a leader who when his face lights up, it causes us to light up? And his latter rain fills us. Spirit of the Holy Ghost. Uh, but, you know, it's good to be around leaders that invigorate you, but from time to time, you're going to have some of the others and you need to know how to handle them too. In the light of a king's face, there is life, and his favor is like the clouds that bring the spring rain. In the light of the king's face is life. His favor is like a cloud of the spring rain. The king's favor is like the clouds that bring rain in the springtime. Life is there. How many you know when Jesus smiles on you? He says when his countenance smiles on you, it brings life to you. It invigorates you. It causes the spirit of the living God to come up in you. And... Uh, so now this other one we're reading. How many of the Bible tells you to get wisdom? And uh, we're talking about biblical wisdom here. Amen? Get wisdom. It's worth more than money. Choose insight over income every time. And so many people, when they go into it, and I used to be this way years ago, when you go into a job, people look at what it pays. That's the first thing they look at. When God says, you should be looking at uh, at uh, what do I want you to do and it? What's the wisdom I, I have for you? Because God, I, I've seen God start people out where they don't make very much and they end up owning the whole place for a second because they're worried about getting wisdom before they're worried about getting the income. 
And uh, how much better is it to get wisdom than gold? The A to get understanding is rather to be chosen than silver. And so that means you put getting wisdom and having understanding before any profit, any income, any increase. How much better to get wisdom than gold to get understanding to be chosen rather than silver? Notice it says chosen. Most people want these things to just automatically happen. But these are choices you're going to have to make and you'll be faced with them over and over and over. How much better is it to get wisdom and gold? Yes, to get understanding is to be chosen rather than silver. So you're going to have to choose. It is better, much better to have wisdom and knowledge than gold and silver. Amen? The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. I'm going to have to fine tune my mic, I think. The highway of the upright avoids evil. The one who guards his ways, way protects his life. The road of upright living bypasses evil. Watch your step and save your life. The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. So you're not even supposed to be on the same path as the others. There's two different, how many of the Bible says there's two different paths? And you get to choose. And, uh, you know, it's a narrow path, but I like here how it calls it a highway. Because when you start really getting in with God and you choose His path, it ain't no slow little step. He's moving you along very rapidly on it. As long as you can stay in the right place and stay off the bumper rails. Anybody ever went and raced go-karts? And you lose as long as you, somebody kept putting you in the bumper rails, you can't get go very fast. And that's what it's like when we get distracted, let, let sin in our life, let other things in there. When we're on this path of righteousness, it'll keep slowing us down. But God wants you to be on the highway. As long as you can keep your between both lines, you can find your line through it, and you'll just keep on flying down the highway. Amen. The highway of the upright is depart from evil. He that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. The highway of the upright turns aside from evil. Whoever guards his way preserves his life. And notice it said, whoever turns, whoever guards. These are all your choices. God's not making you a robot. You get to choose which way you go. You get to choose what you have out of this life. Every day when you get up, you make choices. The highway of the upright is depart from evil. He who keeps his way preserves his soul. How many would like to preserve, keep your soul out of hell? How many of the idea of going and being set on fire, squinching, clenching of teeth, gnashing, and all that just sounds great? Anybody want to go there? Be burned forever and ever? Never to see, probably possibly see your loved ones again, see anyone you care about, never to experience the presence of God again. <clears throat> That's what this is talking about. And so if you'll follow after Jesus, if you'll follow after those things that are upright, if you'll follow the wisdom He's been laying out here, He says that you can preserve your soul. Now, Jesus had to die to save your soul but you can preserve your soul where you don't even have to get into a mess in the first place. Amen? Those who, who are good travel a road that avoids evil. Now, you know what? I can't tell you how many dumb people I've seen that they go, you know, they, uh, they go to the bars and they go hang out with the men and women alone and and they go and, and they go and do this and they go and do that and they go, well, man, I just slipped and tripped, Pastor. I just fell into sin. No, you didn't. That that thought was in there way before you entered into that, way before you made that mess. It was there and you chose to do that. Now you might have been had demonic influences when it was on you, but they could have never influenced you if you hadn't already opened the door. Big smile. Come on. 
Those who are good travel a road that avoids evil. Now the Bible even says a, a flee even the appearance of evil. Do you know how many people I've offended throughout the ministry when I've dared to ask them to flee even the appearance of evil? Now I'm not asking to be religious, okay? That I ever, I know I've told this story here, but I don't know how many of you remember it, so I'm going to tell it again. There was Mildred, she was the church gossip, and Tom, he was a new saved convert. He had been really wild. And uh, Mildred, she'd see stuff going on and she'd tell people, well, she saw Tom's uh, truck down at the tavern again. So she went and told all the church that Tom had slid back into alcohol again. Boy, we really need to pray for Tom. He's back to drinking. We, it's horrible. How do you know? I saw his truck at the bar. He was there all night. And so when Tom heard, he was crushed. He's like, well, my truck broke down there. So he, Tom, he didn't say nothing because, you know, he was just a baby Christian. And so he handled it the best way he knew how. He uh, took his truck and parked it out in front of Mildred's house and just walked home. <laughs> and next service everybody was talking about how Tom spent the night at Mildred's house and what must have went on <laughs> and Mildred was swearing nothing went on now Mildred was in the wrong for gossiping and everybody was in the wrong for not fleeing the appearance of evil <laughs> and even if somebody does do wrong how we handle it matters amen are y'all with me so those who are good travel a road that avoids evil. Now, what happens is people try to start deciding what's evil and what's not. There's only one book that decides. Do you all know that? There's only one book that has the wisdom to decide what's evil. And I found if you're trying to find something to cover it up, the answer is already is that yes, it's evil. Yes, it's wrong. No, you shouldn't be doing it or you wouldn't be looking so hard, hard to okay it. So if, and he says, so so watch where you are going; it may save your life. And if you'll watch where you're going, you're not going to have to worry about tripping and slipping and falling into a mess. You won't even be near the mess in the first place. Everybody still with me tonight? Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Man, most people can quote this and almost nobody can tell you where it even is in the Bible. They'll say, pride comes before the fall. It says, pride comes before destruction and an arrogant spirit before a fall. First pride and then the crash. The bigger the ego, the harder the fall. And if everybody was honest, they probably could say they've already experienced this in their life once or twice. Hopefully not. Hopefully you learned. And because I can tell you the bigger the, the bigger the pride. The bigger the ego, the harder you're going to fall. And uh, if you'll just be a good donkey, you won't take none of the glory. And the glory don't belong to you anyhow. Before goeth this pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. And unfortunately, you can see this writing on the wall for people, but most people don't ever examine their own selves, as the Word of God tells us to do. And so they don't see the, the writing on the wall. So pride goes before destruction and an arrogant spirit before a fall. Pride leads to destruction and arrogance to downfall. There is nothing good that comes from pride. But what is one thing the world pushes? Have pride in yourself. Be proud of yourself. Now, there's nothing wrong, wrong with feeling accomplished, but feeling accomplished and being proud is two separate things. I can feel accomplished in something, but I realize that the Bible says it over in James chapter 5, it says, Every good and perfect gift, gift comes down from the Father of lights above. 
And I realize that if there's any good thing in me, if there's a gift in me that's excelling, that's going ahead, achieving something, that it must be coming down from the Father above. And so He is the one then that deserves the glory. Right? And so when, if you and, and I can feel, I feel accomplished that we made ten years as a church. But I also realize I really had nothing to do with it other than being obedient and staying on the good road, the right road, and listening to the Lord. Amen. And you notice it don't say it might. You don't say it could. It says this will happen. When you see this, there will be a fall. It's one reason why, and I realized early on in ministry that I could be susceptible to pride. Especially if you've just struggled for everything your whole life. When you, people get successful, if they're not careful, man, pride can just come. And that's when I prayed and the Lord gave me that good donkey bit that you all hear all the time. Because I just made sure that He's the one that gets the glory. And I realize who I am and I remember who I was without Him. Now, I was successful in the world, but every, but every, every success I had, the Bible says there's pleasure for a season, but there's pleasure forevermore to the right hand of the Father. Every time, every success I had, I might stay successful in that, but it was always met by more turmoil, more challenges, more of those things. I never got to enjoy anything that I accomplished. Do you know that's true for most people? If you really had talked to them? The only place I've got to, that I've got to keep it is when, I'm just the, not keep it, the, the, you just get to keep feeling good about what you're doing, is just letting God have all the glory and do what He called you to do. Better it to be a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. And listen, there's a we teach this in our Bible school, but there's a difference between being humble and acting humble. I've known a lot of people in the ministry that act humble. I don't meet very many that are really humble. I do know some, love some. But being humble means that you know that without the grace of God on your life, you couldn't be doing what you were doing. And what happens though is that people a lot of times, they see true humility as a weakness. If you're not building yourself up, if you're not networking, if you're not trying to accomplish all this stuff inside yourself, then they think, well, they're not very driven, they're not this, they're not that. But, and, and what happens is a lot of people that other people think are successful don't want to hang out with you. But I, and it's not true. A lot of times they, they are attracted to you until they figure out they can't influence you. They'll be attracted to you trying to get something from you until they realize they can't get nothing from you and then they don't want nothing to do with you at all. Because they want what you have, but they don't want to go through what you went through. And, once they, and what they do, people that aren't humble, is they exploit other people's gifts all the time. My goodness, Holy Spirit. <laughs> I didn't plan on teaching all of this. But it happens all the time in the body of Christ. They exploit. They use them. They use their gifts. Use this. Use that. But when you're humble, a lot of times, it, it'll keep you with people that don't think too highly of yourself. And what your job then is to get bring them up. So they think they think they see themselves in God's eyes. I mean, the only way we can really come up is when we see what Jesus thinks about us. It's better to be lowly of spirit with the humble than to divide plunder with the proud. And, it, you know, usually everybody sees the proud and these successful people. They see, man, they're really doing something, you know. But... Uh, it's better to live hum humbly among the poor than to live among the rich and famous. Better to be lowly of spirit with the poor than to divide the spoil with the proud. It is better to be of a lowly spirit with the poor than to divide the spoil with the proud. It is better to be of a lowly spirit with the poor than to divide the plunder with the proud. It is better to be humble and stay poor than to be one of the arrogant and get a share of their loot. 
And you know what they people do that even in ministry they they want to share and they'll tell you I've had people I didn't plan speaking on this I've had people tell me we're going to give you one more chance to join with us you know and if you don't we're not going to ask you no more and you're never going to make it you're never going to be that well we just want to go you just before you were telling me just how great I was and how you guys just couldn't do without me now you're telling me if I don't join you I'm never going to amount to them now which was it And, and then the devil will tell you, you know, you, especially you start hearing his voice, if you're very tuned, if your heart's right at all, and you're trying to study, you'll recognize him talking too. You know, he goes, well, you're never going to mount. You threw away your only chance to be a big name. Well, you know what? You have to finally admit, you know, if you if you, if you chase after that big name, guess what you already went into? You fell into that pride thing. <coughs> now, these are things that I personally dealt with. True? Over and over, and and uh, you know what I decided? I would rather nobody ever care. I don't care if anybody ever. I truly don't. I don't care if Brian Williams ever makes famous. If anybody knows my name, but as long as the people that I meet, that they, as long as they meet Jesus, and they never forget Him, they never forget what I said about Him, then I've done my job. But you know, there has been times in my life, but boy, you know, I, I had to stop and think about it. I realized you're throwing a lot away. And they probably could have. They they had rose a bunch of people up. But you know, I hadn't seen a lot of fruit from anybody. I just seen a bunch of people running around from church to church taking money from everybody. But I hadn't seen souls. I hadn't seen a revival. <laughs> and that was been the only thing I'd ever been contending for. So why would I sell out for that? Because that is what you do, you sell out. And a lot of times in churches, that's what people do. They sell out. Or in ministry, someone will say, well, you're not getting paid what you're worth. Well, you're not signing my check. God is. <coughs> the just shall live by faith. Is anybody getting anything out of this? Am I helping anybody? You'll say, how does that apply to me? Well, you know, when I was coming up in ministry, I was offered lots of all kinds of jobs. And if I'd always went with the one that paid the most, I'd have never ended up probably where I'm at. I learned to go where the assignment was. It used to always be about the money and how much I made. And I'm not telling you, God has nothing against you making money. He wants to bless you so He can bless the church and He can bless... He keeps saving souls and he wants he may make you a paymaster or he may have you a person that's going to be on assignment going places to, to minister to people and share the gospel that if he didn't put you in there, you would that nobody else would get in there. Yes? Uh, well, I've taught on it before. I'm not going to teach you on it tonight. I've taught on, you've been here. I've taught on it several times. And so, you have to where am I at? What verse am I on? 19? Yeah, it's better to be humble and stay poor than to be there and share of their loot. And so God will put you on assignments. He'll put you places. And so it's important to have the peace of God to know where you're going. Nothing wrong. You know, I can tell you, before God revealed all this to me, I can tell you exactly how I decided which job I'd be at. Whichever paid the most. Which one had the best benefits. It was a shift for me to start going, God, and this is just one of the many things, but God, would, where do you want me to be in? And it shocked me when he started picking places I would have never picked. But you know what? He, I never starved and never went hungry. When I left the big job down at the mines and all the guys said, hey, man, you're going to lose everything you're going to own. You're going to lose your house, you're going to lose your truck, you're going to lose all this. I think it's funny that I still got the same truck. Some of them have moved on, got this, got that. And they still have lost everything. But the thing that they told me I'd lose, mine still, I guess what gets me, some of them, they got newer trucks, that's fine, I'm happy for them. But what, what gets me is that God kept the thing that they said I would lose. Mine still looks brand new. The thing that they said I wouldn't have and I wouldn't have these things, God's almost kept mine in the same condition it was the day I left. How cool is that? And that's the things God can do. Amen. Lord, touch my eyes. It's like one or the other. With the world. I'd rather have a... 
He that handles a matter wisely find good, and whoso trusts the Lord, happy is he. Smile look at your neighbor and say, happy. Happy, happy, happy. If you want to be happy, you have to learn to truly trust the Lord. He said, happy. Happy, happy. <laughs> if you want to learn to be happy, you have to learn to trust the Lord. If your happiness is low, I can guarantee you there's somewhere you're being tested in and probably tried and maybe just not quite trusting God in all the way you should. It's not a bad, it's not a, an op, that's not a condemnation. I'm just telling you it's a really good sign to check yourself and realize where I didn't say it's 100% accurate, but I'm saying it's usually a pretty good judge. Sometimes I actually know where it's at. I'm already asking for help. <laughs> Amen? <coughs> the one who understands a matter finds success, and the one who trusts the Lord will be happy. Yeah. How do you know how we handle things matter? And I'm going to tell you, there's only one way to handle things. Some are going to say it's too simple. But it's according to the Word of God. <laughs> If you look, and I didn't know it all, I still don't know it all, but I didn't used to even know any word. But when God started dealing with me, I started figuring, I started studying hard when I have an issue. When I'd even hear about somebody else having an issue, I'd go to the word and find out what the word had to say about it. So when that thing came up, I knew what it said. And how I handled the matter would be according to the word of God. When somebody asks me, well, Pastor, what do you think about this? I don't tell them my opinion. They don't really want to hear my opinion. I tell them what the Word of God has to say. And it's the same way that I try, the same thing I hold myself accountable to. It pays to take life seriously. Things work out when you trust in God. Now, I'll come back to that in a minute. He that giveth heed unto the Word shall find good. That person that listens to, respects it, expects the Word and applies the Word is going to find good things. But to find something, what do you have to do? Look for it. Look for it. <coughs> and so, most of the time, people don't deserve, believe they deserve anything good. Therefore, they don't look for anything good. I'm going to say that again. Most of the time, people don't think they deserve anything good. So therefore, they don't ever look for anything good. Amen. So, uh, and whoso trusteth in Jehovah, happy is he. When you trust some, anybody ever done that silly trust game? I mean, we could do it tonight. I could get some of you up on the pew here and we could play the trust game, you know, and you could fall back. Trust me to catch you. Oh, are you volunteering? No, I played it. Oh, I thought you were volunteering. I think she was volunteering. No, I wasn't. That's when they fall back and be like, oh, I got to catch that. You don't... It's natural to be apprehensive of sometimes of humans when you play the trust game. But if you know God has said something like all authority is from God and of God, then you can trust God even with those individuals. Even if they're not trustworthy, the one that's guiding you is still trustworthy. Come on, are you still with me? And so, I found that trust doesn't come easy. Amen. But I've also found that without trust, you'll never have faith. Because trust means you absolutely, positively believe what He says in the Word of God to be true. And you're relying on that 100%. If it says, by His stripes you were healed, you're trusting Him in that. It says, I've been young and old, I'm nursing the righteous forsaken, or a seed begging for bread. You're trusting in that.
Whoever gives thought to the Word will discover good. Can I get an amen? They don't need no explanation. And blessed is he who trusts the Lord. If you want to be blessed, if you want to have prosperity, you start trusting God. How many knows the first time you paid your tithes that first week when your faith was activated, you had to trust God? If you've never done that, I encourage you. It's an awesome experience. True. He who heeds the Word finds prosperity. Oh my goodness, they put that prosperity in the Bible. God doesn't want you just to starve. Now, I don't preach on prosperity around here, and I'm not on this prosperity. God. I don't think the Gospel is all about prosperity, but I don't think God is against prosperity either. If He wants to make you a walking billboard of the goodness of God, that means you've got to be prospering a little bit. That means that, he, that people's got to believe that God is blessing you. Now, how God blesses you is, is different. You know, it doesn't mean money's falling from the sky and you're driving uh, three new Cadillacs and living in a mansion down, down the street. <coughs> Amen. Prosperity in the day and time can, can mean that your, your roof is paid for, your vehicle's paid for, you've got food on the table, and you got enough to go and do something fun. In today's society, how many know that's prosperity? Now, I know some preachers are going to preach that under the table and say, I'm undermining it. And I agree there's a lot more to it than that. But I'm also not going to, I'm also, also not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater and despise small beginnings. I believe I read that somewhere. And all prosperity starts somewhere when you start believing it. You better not despise the small beginnings because then you'll miss it always trying to get something that you didn't even appreciate a little bit. God can never bless you for more. But anyways, I'll move on. Whoever trusts in Yahweh could be blessed. <coughs> Might be blessed. Is going to think about blessed. Is working his way to being blessed. Is doing the methods until he's blessed. Is blessed. If you trust, you're blessed. If you trust, you're blessed. That's it. That's good news, amen? Pay attention to what you are taught. I'm so glad some of you thought enough to come back tonight. The rest of you, you're heathens. You're watching online? Repent. Apologize. Get right. And I love you. And you will be successful. Pay attention to what you are taught and you will be successful. Does it say you might be successful? Does it say you could be? I mean, come on. Does this stuff really work, Sister Deb? Oh, come, then why isn't everybody successful? Oh my goodness. She said that. I did. Let's get her a microphone. She, she said it. She's going, he set me up. Everybody thinks they can do it their way instead of God's way. They think their way is better than God's. Amen. And so they're not really paying attention to what they're taught. They're really trying... Most people always want God to bless their mess. Or at least bless their idea. I mean, it was a good idea. I wrote up by five friends, two supervisors, and I even wrote into Ann on that editor thing. They probably do that in the newspaper no more. I'm showing my age. Yeah, Ann Landers. It's probably showing my age, sir. These youngins are looking at me funny. You're looking at me funny, too? Oh, my. Anyhow, but what you're taught? How many, how many would be to taught to be taught something? That means you have to be somewhere to be taught, Amen. and that means you have to be submitted to somewhere. You have to have a home church. You got to have some place there, and you also got to be studying daily to show yourself approved. And then he says, "You will be successful." 
And so you could be. It doesn't regard us what the devil says or what everybody else says at work. They used to tell me all the time, you'll get fired any day. I mean, they tried every way to get me. You know, they never got me fired. I never got fired. Matter of fact, they asked me to come back. And when I left, they said, well, when you get tired of that, you can just come on back down here. I said, I don't think I'm going to get tired of chasing Jesus. I haven't yet. I don't even think there's there even been a time that we seriously even talked about going back, has it? Like me to the mines or anywhere. I mean, they offered, but we've never even ever considered that. It's never been an option. No. And you will be successful. Trust in the Lord and you will be happy. And you know something that usually doesn't go together? Successful people and happiness. But with God, you can have both. How good is that? Amen? What time be it? Oh my, 7.44. Glory to God. So I'm blowing up my phone. And I guess they want the bees off of them. <laughs> I'll respond. Lord bless me. I wish I was kidding, but I mean, it's good that the Lord did. To be watching this going, he's good. Glory. I think we've covered some great information tonight. I think some powerful nuggets. For the record, I do realize I'm in rare form, but I'm not always responsible for whatever anointing arrests on me when I get up here. That's not a cop out. Amen. So, there's not as many here tonight, so everybody's got to answer double. I'm just kidding. <laughs> what you got? Yeah, Sister, uh, what's your name again? Shauna. Shut. How we say that, Sissy? Shauna. Go with, with the assignment is, and always go with, with the peace. Make sure the peace of God is there, otherwise God's not there. Amen. Sister Heather Hall. If you want to be truly happy, learn to trust God, and without trust you'll never have faith. Sister Rebecca. Stay humble. Don't get mad and do anger for anger. Amen. Good stuff. <laughs> Sister Heather. Uh, without or being truly humble means that you have the grace of God upon you to do what you do. Without it, then it's it's just you and not God. Amen. If you, uh, if you want to be blessed, trust God. And there's a difference between being humble and acting humble. Sister Rebecca. Is it better to get wisdom than to be a fool? Amen. I got a few. Okay. Um, one is get wisdom before any increase. We talked about how much better it is to get wisdom than um, and, and understanding rather than silver. So get the wisdom before the increase, um, and it's a choice. And what Heather said, without the grace of God, you couldn't do what you're doing. So stay humble and allow God to use you. And learn to go where the assignment is. And go with the peace of God. There you go. Oh, and trust, trust God equals being blessed. Amen. Next, Miss Rachel. 
Without trust, you won't have faith, and God won't let you start. Amen. Good stuff. Sister Deb Allen. How you handle the situation, whatever it may be, will depend whether uh, you're happy or you fall. Amen. Amen. Good stuff. Anybody else tonight? Sister Joyce Parker. <laughs> Always trust in the Lord and keep Him on your mind always and never worry about what anybody else thinks just keep it between you and the lord amen and he'll make you happy 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 yeah happy happy happy, <laughs> happy, 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 happy. <laughs> that makes me happy glory anybody else tonight any other nuggets you got um i got one um just seeing people in the world how they're they're lost and they they're seeking something and they're very unhappy just knowing that you can be happy when you trust God. And you have to be submitted to somewhere. You can't just be out there just out on your own, floundering around. You have to get plugged in somewhere and draw close to God, and He will fill you. And He'll make you happy. Happy, happy, happy. <laughs> Amen. Lord. You got, Sister Deb, has got something else? She, she does. I, I'm saying, not oh. my question. <laughs> When you keep your heart wise, you know, it, it increases and uh, it helps you to have a discerning heart to know what's going on and to do what God has called you to do. Amen. Amen. Good stuff. All right. Well, it sounds like y'all got, got to meet tonight. I really enjoy this part. Of, and there's some more coming up that, man, I just really love some verses we're going to be looking into. Uh, but uh, it's going to be good. Amen. And we're done early. And you can tell everybody else that didn't come back. <laughs> Say, we got done early, even. You should have came to church. <laughs> Glory. Amen. All right. Uh, Pastor Tammy, will you come dismiss us? Offering. Offering. Oh, we, did. Offering. we did, but you were late. Oh, yes. You are. I called you that. No, I, I don't know if I did, but I'm doing it now. But if you want, Lord, forgive me. I never want to come between somebody and and their blessing, so I'll quit being on there. And if you do have an offering, either hand, um, give it to me or you can slip it under the door back and there. And Pastor Tammy's going to dismiss us. Amen. Lord God, we just thank you for the word tonight, Lord. And God, I just pray that you just fill your people with <coughs> the strength and might and energy. And Lord, we just thank you for your word, Lord, that it's alive and it's living, God. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit, Lord, that, Lord, it gives us the, the power and the boldness we need, Lord, to to live for you, to, to speak your word uh, with passion and hunger and drive, Lord. So, God, just fill us tonight, Lord, and as we go out for the rest of our week, Lord, uh, just open doors, Lord, for us to help to speak life into other people, the word of God that will forever change them. Thank you for, that we are your vessels, Lord, that you will speak through us and use us. And we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We'll see those for Thursday night for Overcomer Recoveries at 7 o'clock tonight. Otherwise, we'll see you guys all on Sunday morning.